right, so I've used a bucket of topping. So I'm going to mix up. So what I did is I cleaned my bucket out. Here's a box of mud. Comes in bags. And then you take it. There you go. Okay. And you just put a little bit, less than a cup of water in it. Then you get one of these beaters. If you put it in a half inch drill, most of your professionals now are using cordless, but this is what I got. And you just want, you just want to incorporate that water a little bit. Well, really good actually. You should have a bucket of water to stick this in and clean it off, but it gets built up too much, then I just beat it with a hammer, knock the slag off. Anyway, that's mixing mud. Like I said, you don't want it real thin because then it won't stay on the wall, but you do want it thin enough that that it uh, that it spreads good. And, lays down good and you can get the air bubbles out of it. But, like I said, we're just, uh, this is just a garage. You know, I'm going to be building stuff out here. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's, I've, I've gone way overboard. <laughs> It started out, hey, let's put some sheetrock. What it started out as was, let's put some, what it started out as is let's put some plastic up on the ceiling and uh, throw some insulation on top of the plastic. And then it's like, no, if we're going to go to that much work, why don't we sheetrock it? And fire tape it and then it went well if we're gonna fire tape it why don't we two coat it and texture it and paint it then it's like well let's insulate the walls and sheetrock them and let's put in a bunch of electrical and so like I said the, the project's grown some hair but it's gonna be nice uh, you know and you deserve you know as you get older I think you deserve nice things and It'll be nice, you know, it'll be a lot nicer than anything my dad had. Uh, I've got some pictures that I'm going to put in one of my next posts of the green truck with me in the back and then my son in the back and then his son in the back. So, you know, it's, it's all about family, you know, and about, you know, enjoying it.
enjoying the moment. And I'm enjoying this. It's looking really good. I, uh, I'm excited to see how it turns out myself. So anyway, I wax on. All right, so there's the sheetrock final coat. It's cooled off a little bit. So I'll let this dry. Give some spots a quick sand and uh, then we'll be good to go. And also, if you see the compressors back together, I went and bought a new valve assembly, valve plate, and took about six or seven minutes to pump up to 135 pounds of the drain was open in the bottom and it bled off a little bit before I got it shut but it pumped up to 135 pounds and has a new plate so now I'll go ahead and I got a new uh, breather valve from E-Parts uh, online they're actually local here so I went and bought a new Part put it back together and fired it up and it worked so I'm pretty happy got me a pretty nice compressor second hand that's gonna be its home and I'm in at about 260 bucks so I feel good about that anyway it's coming on won't be long until uh, we have this thing uh, the truck back in here doing some more body work so looking good so here's the part I replaced I don't know if I showed you this video last night but there's a hole right there in one of the valves and then almost half of that one is missing so that's what I replaced was uh, was this valve uh, body and like I said it wasn't hard uh, first time I've ever torn a compressor part and put it back together and uh, like I say pretty happy about it but here's the parts you know sometimes you just gotta tear into stuff and with the internet and YouTube you know the sky's the limit you can do just about anything so don't be afraid to try. I couldn't have made it any more broke than it was, so now it works and we're moving on. Okay, so compressors fixed. Walls have been sanded, garage blown out. Heater is on gonna put some primer on this thing and get some color on these walls so for a garage she's gonna be beautiful that goes away unless you got a really small space don't waste your money on that it uh, only works in a small space I'd have to have four or five of those in this garage to heat it good heater but just not for this application okay so we'll look around Okay, I'm going to get started priming. Okay, <laughs> here it is. The corners are cut in and I'm getting ready to roll the final color. What I did is I had a couple gallons of white left from the ceiling. I had two gallons left from the remodel and then I had another gallon and they were gray and then there was a I don't know if you can tell but there was a dark gray two lighter grays and some white and I mixed them all together and came up with the exact same white exact same gray that I would painted the inside of the house with <laughs> so we like the color so we'll see how it turns out in the garage but I'm getting ready to lay on the the first coat we'll see how it covers then we'll go from there but You've all watched people paint, so I'm not going to bore you with watching me roll paint. So, 
but I wanted you to see the progress. All right, <laughs> there you go, there's some contrast. But there's one coat of my specialty gray. You kind of see over there, I'm moving that heater as I said before, so I'm not going to paint. I'll paint all that once I get that corner fixed the way I want it. But yeah, it's hard to tell now that it's all one color. You look over here and you can see it, but there it is. One coat. I'll probably throw the heat on for a few minutes and then uh, tomorrow morning I'll put another coat of paint on it. But it's coming along. Okay, so I'm putting on a second coat on the walls and let me tell you that second coat of paint makes all the difference you can you can see how this is wet and this is the dry and that second coat just really really makes it pop so I could have got away with one coat if you look really close you know you might be able to see a couple areas that have that didn't cover all the way, but man, putting on that second coat really makes all the difference. So I'm going to uh, just roll it on here for you, let you see what I'm doing. If you've never rolled paint, uh, my advice to you is put it on and then leave the room. <laughs> if you uh, if you sit and watch it dry, you're going to be really unhappy because as it dries, it dries really kind of uneven and it really looks like you've uh, not done a very good job. I'm, I'm getting some dirt from somewhere. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm just picking those little specks off as I go, putting a good heavy coat on. Well, not too heavy, I mean, it already has one, but it, uh, it makes a huge difference, uh, the second coat. So I would, uh, if you're gonna do this, you know, the, the home centers sell paint and they, guarantee in one cover but that's not been my experience uh, two coats is always best gives you the best results the other thing is when I went looking for paint for this project I, uh, I looked at the contractor grade paint which, you know, is a lot cheaper. And then I looked at the, the expensive stuff and I, I was looking for if there was a difference in coverage. Because in my mind, I would think that the more expensive the paint, the higher quality of the paint, you know, the better coverage. You should have to use less. Well, what I found is on the gallon cans that I looked at, it's the same. They all tell you, and I, I might get this a little wrong, so uh, check for yourself, but uh, they all said that they would uh, cover 400 square feet. So I was a little curious about that. I mean, what's the difference then if... I mean, I know there's got to be differences, but what would be the difference if they didn't?
So what I did is, uh, because it's a garage, I like to go with the contractor grade paint. Got a bright white. Paid around $100 for five gallons. And then when I got ready to, and I only put one coat on the ceiling, but uh, I put a really nice coat of white primer on. So technically, technically the ceiling got two coats of paint, and technically these walls got uh, three. But uh, what I'm saying is that if you're on a budget, don't shy away from the, the contractor grade cheaper paint. Oh, what I was saying is, is that after I had painted the ceiling, I had probably two gallons of white paint left. And because of my other projects in the house, I had a really dark gray, and then I had two gallons of a lighter gray. And so I took the two gallons of lighter gray and dumped them in to the white and I took the darker can of gray and dumped it into the can, into the bucket. And then I took it to the home center and uh, had them shake it for me to mix it all up. And when I got home and opened it up, this is the same identical color as what I painted in my house. So I had two gallons of this color and by adding a dark, a dark, dark gray to a white and then these two gallons, I was able to mix five gallons of this of this, uh, this paint. I was going to, one of these cans, yeah, it's this one. I, uh, this is the original color and this is the color I made and now that I'm looking at it, they're, they're a little different, but not that much. But anyway, here's a quiz for you. If you take every color in the rainbow and you mix it all together, what color are you going to get? And spoiler alert, <laughs> you'll get a color or a shade of gray. When, uh, when I first started working, when I first started working for the school district, uh, the district did all their own garbage collections and maintained all their own garbage cans and and uh, I worked in the metal shop which is where the welding shop was as well and so when they bring the garbage cans in to fix the wheels and stuff like that on them they'd go over to the uh, uh, paint shop after they were done fixing them and what the paint shop would do is they would take all their extra gallons of paint everything that they had from all their other jobs and they'd dump it into a five gallon bucket and like I say what you ended up with was a, a variation of gray so try it sometime. If you got a bunch of reds and whites and browns, 
take and dump them all into one bucket and mix them up and you'll get a variation of, of gray out of it. Just a little trivia. <laughs> Some of those things you pick up over your life. So as I said earlier in these videos, uh, we're right in the middle of the pandemic that's going on. It's 2020. Uh, it's March. Oh God, what is it? March. March 28th. And so we're kind of just supposed to be sheltering in place or self self quarantine. I know that's not a politically politically correct term, quarantine, but it's basically what we are. So Susan and I yesterday went to Lowe's. And Got a bunch of stuff so that I could stay busy here in the garage, uh, getting some projects done while we're self quarantine or practicing social distancing. But I don't know. Here's a little piece of junk. I just pick them off. Those are underneath, so then roll over where you picked it. All right, that's two coats. So when you're doing a project like this, you end up moving stuff from one, one corner to the next. So I think my next project's going to be to move that stuff from that corner, that corner over here into the middle. You can see I've still got to insulate and sheetrock that, and I'll go ahead and do that and get that corner done so that I can start putting up shelves and stuff like that so I can get things put away. My son's getting anxious to get his truck back in, back in his garage, but... Just take a pan around here and it's hard to see with the the glare. I like semi-gloss paint. A lot of people tell you, you know, to paint your ceilings flat and your walls eggshell and your trim semi-gloss, but my experience is, is that those uh, eggshell and stuff like that, they don't uh, resist the stains and things like that. So semi-gloss paint has a little harder shell on it and if you get stuff on it you can wipe it off and it, it seems to hold up a little bit better uh, and I painted the ceiling a gloss white so the next step for over here is to trim out the electrical paint the trim put the trim up and start working on the bench that's going to start over in that corner and work its way this way and uh, just start getting things back together so I can get the shop back together. I got some people that I know that want some, have some minor body work issues they want taken care of that if they took them to a body shop they'd want thousands of dollars to fix and they'd replace the bumpers and all kinds of stuff like that. But, you know, you get in a garage situation like this, you can do things for people that, you know, for insurance reasons and all kinds of reasons you know body shops can't do uh, they can't really help people out in that kind of way so I've got some jobs I've got to get in here and get taken care of and so anyway I'll uh, keep showing you the progress as we go along